Hello world! Today I'm in Saga Prefecture, which is in the southern part of Japan and is an Olympics and Paralympics host town to the Netherlands and Finland. But what exactly is a host town? So I found out it's part of the 2020 Tokyo Olympics and Paralympics host town initiative. Local towns in Japan welcome athletes from all over the world who are taking part in the Tokyo Games. Those host towns will build warm friendship with participating countries through grassroots exchanges. They are part of the government's globalization and revitalization efforts for local areas, which is why there are 517 host towns around Japan hosting 183 countries slash regions. Essentially, this program aims to have locals and Olympic and Paralympic athletes interact, learn about each other, and be friends. I think it's a great initiative, since there are so many worthwhile areas in Japan to go to beyond the big city centers. Unfortunately, due to the coronavirus, I can't see this interaction. But what I can do is show you some of what you can experience in Saga. Helping me with this is the governor of Saga Prefecture. As the Olympic athletes had come to Saga in 2019, my wife and I asked the governor what they were up to. I too think it's too bad that they didn't try out the onsens, but at least they have something similar in Finland, which is saunas. Historically, Japan has used a kind of sauna as well, a steam bath. In fact, my wife and I were simply walking around Ureshino city when I discovered they not only had a free hot spring foot bath, but a leg steam bath as well. Look at that steam. Oh. Now this is purely based on my experience, but for most of the hot springs and public baths I visit in Japan nowadays, they usually have dry saunas. However, this place in Takeo city is a bit different, with saunas more in the Finnish style. Like I said, most Japanese saunas are dry, so creating steam like this is rather rare. So it's starting to get a bit sweaty, a bit steamy right now. That is hojicha, which is roasted green tea. Saga Ureshino ga ocha no ma sanji demo arimashite, de iroiro ma uchi mo ryokucha dattari, ano hojicha dattari challenge shita ndesu ga, ano kekka tekini hojicha ga ma ichiban kaori ga ii na to iu koto de hojicha o sayo shimashita. Okay, that's about 85 degrees Celsius and I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit. But it's hot, I think, right? What is it like in Finland? The Finland ni itte, de yappa li ko dai shizen no naka de ano sauna ni haitte abanto abento te iu sono mizumi no naka no kota mizumi no naka ni ano haitte karada o hiya shitari toka. So I did the hot, and now I got to do the cold. Ooh. All right. So this is 16 degrees Celsius, and not bad. But it's a bit chilly, I must say. So this water is uh, hot spring water. This is really nice, really relaxing. And I bet you at night it'd be even better, just the atmosphere. Part of the Tokyo 2020 Olympics and Paralympics is a commitment to the UN's Sustainable Development Goals. So when I was given a choice of visiting a waste energy plant with carbon capture technology, or a park, I chose the plant. I had a couple reasons for this. The first is that many foreign residents in Japan comment on the amount of plastic used and the complex rules around waste collection. I wanted to see what happens to it all. Secondly, throughout Japan, I've noticed waste energy incineration plants, including right in the middle of residential neighborhoods. I wanted to see what goes on in and around them. This plant was interesting because they not only burn garbage to turn it into electricity, but they are currently only one of four incineration plants in the world to use carbon capture technology. Well, 
出てくる煙自体は水蒸気しか出てないと思っていただいてもいいぐらいにものすごくきれいになっています。発電量が上がって再生可能エネルギーが増やすことができる。まあ、これが今ゴミを燃やした熱で電気を作った時のエネルギーを示しています。その排ガスの中から二酸化炭素を分離回収して周辺が農業を盛んな地域なのでその農業に資源として使ってその農業で雇用と経済を生み出しますと。きゅうりの栽培をしてますでここに二酸化炭素と、えー、焼却した時の熱エネルギーも送ってます奥の長い池があれが、えー、マイクロアルジェ藻類微細藻類を培養していますであの中で育てているのはヘマトコッカスといって、えー、と奥さんもお聞きになられたことあるかもしれないですけどあのアスタキサンチンっていう美容成分があるじゃないですかまさしくあれを作ってる。えー、もゴミを燃やす時に出てくる熱で温水プールを加温するマイナスのイメージだったものをプラスに転じるということを、えー、このプラントで体現をしたということが一つ大きなポイントになっています。I was able to see where all the garbage is dumped as well as the crane man who mixes all of it together. The reason they mix the garbage like this is so that it burns constantly without having to relight it, which would require the use of oil. 結構難しいんですよあの大型の UFO キャッチャーみたいですけどもう超ベテランさんというかもう技術をしっかりこう学ばれてやられてるんですそれと一番重要なのはここ全然匂いがしないと思うんですけどこの中は臭いです正直、はい、でその中でも一生懸命作業されているので Until he talked about the smell I didn't realize that there was none not in front of the building not in the crane room not on the rooftop プラスチックも一緒に焼いてますただこれを分ければじゃあいいのかというと分けてリサイクルした方が二酸化炭素が量発生量が多くなっちゃうんですよでここは全部それを計算した結果こういう焼き方の方が一番いいと環境に優しいというふうに判断してこういう焼き方をしている I have no clue how to transition from garbage to porcelain so I'm not even going to try Arita Yaki which is porcelain coming from the Arita area in Japan has a long history dating back to 1616 So, 時期調整に成功したのがこの有田なんですね。So the the Dutch at the time,、um, you know, being there as traders, they noticed these products and they、uh, started to make large orders. So they actually built new kilns to be able to fulfill the size of these orders. 有田の歴史も素晴らしいで環境も素晴らしい。でこう焼く人たちの職人さんの腕も素晴らしいだけどやっぱりこう常にこうデザインっていうものは革新的にやっぱり変,変化をしていかなきゃいけないあの使うものもねやっぱり僕らもただ今までの有田のものを作って守ってるだけじゃダメなんだなやっぱり新しく変わらなきゃいけないんだなっていうのが一番大きく変わったところですね。そことあのオランダのデザインをこうコラボしたら面白いんじゃないかっていう企画を2016年にやってみたら大変うまくいってこういう形でなんかあの有田焼っぽくないんだけれどもだけどこれ非常にあの売れまして。I got the chance to visit a pottery factory and learned about how Arita Yaki is made nowadays. はいどうぞ。と元小学校です。うんこの木造を私の祖父がえっと移築してきて。でここに立て直して、はいえー、と作りました、はい、石があって、はい、これはまだだから焼く前ですねで必ず焼き物は2回焼くんですけども2回焼いたらこのように小さくなりますねえっ、ー、と石膏型といいますあの有田の方ではろくろは1割もありません江戸時代の頃に人件費が安かった頃にたくさんのろくろ職人を抱えて量産をしてたけど今はそういうことできないのでこの石膏型を使ってものづくりの方を行っています面白い器がいっぱいありますねこれはアーティストです海外から来たアーティストが作りますはいそうですね
ワイングラスです。<笑>まあここもステレオタイプで手書きだ手書きだってその業界の人たちが言うんですけどまあ知らない人たちから言わせばあのいいものができればいいわけですよねその点ではやっぱりそのアーティストとかやっぱり知らない人たちにそうか若い人たちの方がそういう呪縛にとらわれてないのでこちらの技法を見た時にすごくやっぱり感動してしまいます結局手でできることとやっぱり転写でできることそこを突き詰められるのがやっぱり有田の良さかなと思います。転写といったら安いものを作るんだというようなイメージがあるかもしれませんけど例えばこちらですねこれも一つのデカールですこの立体局面に上手にしわなく貼れるこれがテクニックなんですよ。So at the pottery studio, we got the chance to experience making pottery. Since my wife is the artistic one, I stayed behind the camera while she worked the wheel. I really wanted to use that famous song here, but you know, copyright, so here's the best I could do. All right, enough of that. Athletes from the Netherlands, New Zealand, and Fiji are set to train here for the Olympics. So the first thing I had to check was the grass. And I'm no expert on grass, but it was nice. I wouldn't mind playing soccer on this. They had recently renovated the track, and so I jokingly said that we should try racing on it. And they agreed. I've never raced on a 100 meter track before, so I thought the 50 meter marker was the finish line. Once I realized my mistake, I was off to the races again. I know the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Japan is sponsoring this video, but everything I'm saying are my words and my opinions. And I truly think this host town project is quite a good idea. The main reason I started this YouTube channel was to try and connect different cultures together, and this initiative is an attempt to do just that, but in real life, not only via the internet. And I can see it's working on the people involved, including me. After hearing stories about Rwandan athletes training in Hachimantai City, I now can't help but to look out for them and want to cheer them on when I see them in the Tokyo Olympics and Paralympics this summer. And now that I visited Saga once, I want to go back and do a deeper investigation into their waste energy plant and their carbon capture technology. I want to dedicate a full video on how it all works. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Peace. あれやるガチャガチャはいはいはいタガのいろんなものが入っていてこれだと有田焼き有田焼きこれあの冷蔵庫にマグネットになっていてサガ最高と入っていますじゃあグレッグもこれからサガのファンになってくれるんかなそうそうそうそうね<笑>じゃあ<笑>はい。